In case you missed the memo, the Cisco IROS wireless controller or the Cisco IROS virtual wireless controller is not being sold anymore. And although you still have support until 2027, Cisco recommends to migrate to the new product, the Catalyst 9800. And this is what I'm going to show you in this video. I'm going to show you how to deploy this new controller, the C9800, into a VMware workstation. And then I'm going to show you how to associate or to join an access point to be managed by this wireless LAN controller. Now, first thing first, let's download the OVA file from Cisco. On Cisco website, we're going to download this page. And here on the product name, we're going to type 9800 and we want the cloud edition. Okay. And we're going to select the iOS XE software. And I'm just going to select this version, iOS XE 17.14.1. And I'm going to grab the OVA file so that we can use this file and import into VMware Workstation. Okay, after downloading the OVA file, we'll begin importing those files into a specific folder. So I'm just going to set the name for this new VM. That's going to be double LC wireless LAN control. And then I'm going to set the folder where I want those files to be extracted to. So I'm going to click on next and here I'm just going to select deployment option to be 100 AP. So it's going to take less resources. And because this is a lab environment, I don't want to waste resources. Okay. Uh, all of this I'm going to leave as default and I'm going to click on import to begin importing the new machine. Okay. We're going to continue the installation process. Okay, next we're going to initiate the configuration dialog. So I'm going to write yes, set up device management interface, AKA server support. Yes. Okay, now which interface am I going to use as service support? Uh, if you watch my previous video on how to deploy a virtual wireless LAN controller, you probably already know the steps required. But for this one, we're going to follow the same topology. So. I have my uh, wireless LAN controller and this is terrible. So I'm going to wireless LAN controller. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> I did better, but I'm going to use G1 interface as my service port and I'm going to use G2 and this one as my management interface. Okay. Now on this interface, I'll connect a switch. Okay. And this switch will connect to the uh, AP. And on this interface, I'll use the IP address 192.168.43. Slash 24 on the management interface, I'll use a different subnet and that's going to be 192.168.2.17 slash 24. And so this switch will be acting as my DHCP server. Okay and is providing addresses for the subnet 192.168.2.24 okay and it has the ip address 2.10 and the ap will be assigned a dynamic ip address in this pool okay and so will be for my clients so this is the radio frequency and I'll have a client here that will be assigned an IP address. Okay. 192.168.2 something. And the AP will have the IP also 192.168.2 something. Now I also have another server and I'm just going to connect somewhere here. Um, I don't have any more space, but it's going to be my active directory. And this active directory, I have DNS server. 
uh, or role enabled on this one so that uh, when the access points they boot up they're going to search for a specific name of the associate with the controller in this case it should be um cap web controller something uh i have these mapped on my uh dns server so that it will become easier now you don't have to do that that's why i'm not going to show you how to do this this is just one of the different ways the APs will use to discover the controller. Another option that APs will use is through broadcast. And because uh, they are sitting on the same network as the controller, they will be able to find the controller in the same subnet. I also added the information about the controller on my DHCP server configuration. So there is probably I'm using option 43 and there is a specific address that we have to use in order to dynamically inform the uh, wireless line controllers to the APs. These are just different options that I'm using, but you don't have to use them. I'm just telling you that the AP will use one of these options. Uh, there is a specific order, but if you don't have uh, the wireless line controller configured or the DNS, just keep it simple, just deploy the access point just the way I'm doing it and it should be able to discover the wireless LAN controller through broadcast methods, okay? So I think that's everything, so let's continue. I'm going to cancel this and I want to clean this mess, okay? So this is going to be the service port, so I'm going to use interface 1 and I'm going to assign a state IP address and it's going to be 192.168.43.17 and the mask is going to be uh, 255.255.255.0 that's slash 24 I'm going to press enter, configure state route no, I don't need a state route enter the management username so I'm going to use Celesio enter the password I'm going to set my super secret password okay would you like to continue with the wireless setup? Now, basic management setup is now complete. At this point, it is possible to save the above and continue wireless setup using the web user interface, okay? Now, if I want to continue the wireless setup using the CLI, I'm going to type yes. If I want to continue using the graphical user interface, that's the one I want to use, so I have to type no. Now, uh, here I'm going to select option two to save this configuration to NVRAM and exit, okay? Now, we're going to start what Cisco calls the day zero configuration. And essentially, we're going to start by configuring a couple of parameters to uh, not only recognize the access points that we want to be managed by this uh, controller, but also to create the first uh, double LAN or SSID so that clients or users are able to connect to this wireless network. Okay, so I'm going to save the configuration, just write memo, and we're going to continue using the graphical user interface or the web browser. Now, because this is the first time I'm logging into this page is going to throw this error related to self-signed certificates. So to log in, we're going to use the credential we just created and the username is Celesio. Now I'm going to type the password and we are inside. So this is going to be the day zero configuration. So a couple of things here. So we're going to select deployment to standalone. I'm just going to leave the host name as it is. The country, I want this to be PT because I'm in Portugal. On uh, the time, I have to be very careful with this. So I'm going to assume it is okay. Now I want to use UTC as for NTP servers. Uh, that's going to be, uh, I believe I have 33201 and 192.168.2, probably 21, okay? Now, what else is for wireless management settings? So we don't want to make changes on this one because that's the one we're going to use as the service port. So I'm going to change to G2 
and the wireless management VLAN, I'm just going to select VLAN 1, that's the default VLAN and IPv4, yes, what's going to be the IP address on this interface, it is 192.168.217 and the subnet mask is going to be 255.255.0 or slash 24. Now everything is okay here, so I'm just going to click on next. Now wireless network settings, so we want to create our first wireless LAN network. So the name is going to be um, CC, yeah, probably CCIE um, uh, 3. And the password, the pre-shared key, so that's going to be a super secret shared key. And we're going to add this one, okay? Now click on next, let's see what else. Generate self-signed certificate, signature, so we have to type a password here. I'm going to type super secret password. Now to manage the APs, we have to create also a management user. So I'm going to name this as Celesio and also I'm going to type my password and also the secret password. So next we're going to look at the summary, just make sure that everything it is the way we want. So I have the host name, the date, uh, the interface for wireless management 217. So just confirm that everything is the way I want. Typical data, yes. So I'm just going to click on finish and it will take a minute to apply all of this and I'm going to confirm with yes. Okay, so now we have to log in again. So I'm going to use Celesio. Okay, and that should be our first time looking at the dashboard for C9800. Okay, and this is the initial dashboard of the C9800. So it doesn't have much on it, doesn't have anything. We have one wireless LAN, that's the one we created. So let's take a look at it, that's CCIE free uh nothing else so now let's add one access point to be managed by this wireless LAN controller okay i'm going to use the 2702 access point it's still being supported by this wireless LAN controller so before joining the wireless LAN controller i'm going to do a factory reset of this one uh just make sure that it doesn't have any configuration from uh, previous uh, LAN controllers. And the way to do that, actually, let me show you. Uh, we have to press here on the mode button. Oh, you can have a look there. I'm going to use this pen to press on this button. And I'm going to hold it for around 20 seconds while I connect the PoE, the power of Ethernet, to power on this access point. So it is best practice to use a console cable for this one i'm just going to connect and hold it for a couple of seconds and i have a console cable connected to this ap as well so i'm going to wait for a couple of seconds okay so now i'm going to release and the ap is going to do its thing now, if for some reason your access point starts blinking like this, so it's kind of uh, red or amber, or you have access to the console and it just stops on downloading or booting phase, all you have to do is to type boot and the AP is going to reboot and start the joining process with the wireless control. Okay, after some time, we're going to see that we have an access point and if we click on it, it's going to take us to this access point. Okay, so this is the AP name, the model and its IP address. Now, let's try to connect a client to this wireless network. Okay, I'm going to use this computer as the client to connect to this SSID, so the wireless LAN network. So I'm going to type the password. No, I don't want it to be discovered by other PCs on the same network. Uh, so now it's checking the network requirements and hopefully it should connect. Okay, unfortunately it says that it is unable to connect to this network and it seems that there is a bug during this configuration process. So let's go back to the wireless LAN controller to fix this. 
Now, if we go back to configuration and here on tags and profiles policy, there is something that we have to change. So we're going to select the default policy profile and here on access policies, uh, the VLAN we configure initially, uh, the name was changed to this one. Now, for some reason that's inside the code, we have to replace this with the number. So that's VLAN one. We're going to update and apply to the device. Now this is going to cause the AP to flash. So if we go to dashboards, okay, we have the AP. Now let's go back to our clients. And here we're going to try to connect again to CCA free. We're going to type the password. No, we don't want it to be discoverable. Now it's checking network requirements. And hopefully this time it should connect to this wireless LAN network. Okay, and now it says that it is connected, but doesn't have internet. Okay, so we take a look at properties. We should see that it was assigned an IP address on the subnet 192.168.2 something. So, okay. And actually this is the DNS, this is its IP address. And if you go back to the wireless LAN controller, we should see that now we have one client connected to it. Okay, so we click on it, you should see, okay, this is our client 192.168.2.146 is connected to this access point and using this SSID, okay? So that's how you deploy the new Cisco Catalyst 9800. Uh, this is the cloud edition or cloud version to be deployed on a uh, virtualized environment. Now, if you found this video valuable, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and I'll see you on the next one.